bullet went straight through. To hit a vein and nothing. What, you get your medical degree, brother? University of Southside, Queens, brother. wanted to do this movie review for a while but I've been seeing y'all request this movie more and more so you already know I had to do it. This movie falls into the BET classic category because I swear this along with Baby Boy and Holiday Heart stayed on replay but I haven't watched this movie in years so while watching this movie I noticed so many things and I even got emotional towards the end justice for Ziggy child but anyway it's about time we talk about this movie so let's get into it the movie starts with us getting introduced to one of our main characters Ziggy we see him running around the school doing cartwheels sliding downstairs he appears to be alone he does a voiceover where he tells us how this was his safe haven until it wasn't and of course we'll learn what he means by that we are then introduced to the other main and side characters. We have Rodney, a super senior who has avoided school for six years until the block got too hot and now he has the urge to learn. We meet Rivers, who is a professional teen scammer. <laughs> then we meet Lynn, whose life is gonna look real different nine months from now. We also meet Stephanie, who is the super involved, high achieving student longing to get out the hood. We also meet the school's principal, Mr. Armstrong, who is prepping the school's new cop, Jackson, for his first day on the job. Finally, we meet Lester, who is buying Lauren Hill tickets from Rivers. Honestly, dude, just, just keep your money. But he buys them in hopes of inviting Stephanie and taking her out. But Lester and Ziggy were best friends. Ziggy also mentions how Lester was blamed for what would eventually happen at the school, but Ziggy insists that it wasn't his fault. Officer Jackson walks up to Ziggy while he's drawing on the steps and he tells him to get up because he's blocking traffic. Ziggy asks him to let him finish his drawing, but Jackson insists that he gets up. Now for a second, it seemed like Jackson calmed down, but then he goes from zero to a hundred when Lester pops up to take up for Ziggy. Assume the position. What? Now, after this, he should have gotten fired. Cause what did he do to warrant you putting him up against the wall? This is not the penitentiary. Eventually, Lester gets away from Jackson and he and Ziggy head to their first class. Now, this school is sketchy AF. There's no heat, the ceiling is leaking, and there's a broken window. So it is probably just as cold in this classroom as it is outside. But Lester could care less cause he's trying to impress Stephanie with these Lauren Hill tickets. But when a rush of cold air hits the students from the broken window, their teacher, Mr. Knowles, tells the students to exit the classroom so that they can find a warmer room. But other teachers had the same idea because the gym, cafeteria, and auditorium were all filled with students and they had nowhere else to go. It's here where Lester has a short convo with Mr. Knowles. Mr. Knowles asks him about his dad's court case. Apparently, things aren't going good and it's starting to affect Lester's grades. But Mr. Knowles goes to talk to the principal to see what can be done about the cold. We also learn that while all this is going on in the school, the superintendent will be coming in later. That's why Principal Armstrong insisted that Mr. Knowles take them anywhere else, but in the hallways. Keyword, anywhere else. I don't know, Kenny, take him out to get him any, anywhere but in the hall, all right? Anywhere. So, Mr. Knowles does just that and takes them to a local diner to hold class. And look at this idiot. <laughs> That's salt, by the way. But as they continue to hold class, Ziggy peeps a disturbance about to happen. And child, tell me why the diner they were in got robbed. <laughs> this is way too much. While Lester refuses to give the robber his watch, which used to belong to his dad, Mr. Knowles recognizes the robber and distracts him long enough to take him down and stop him from doing something deadly. And you already know Principal Armstrong was pissed and conveniently forgot that he told him to take them anywhere, especially since the superintendent is in the building and he suspends him. So while this is happening, Lynn sees her future baby daddy and unfortunately for her, he didn't want anything to do with her or the consequences of his actions. 
But Mr. Knowles lets the students know that he's leaving and won't be back, and of course, the students were pissed. Stephanie goes to Principal Armstrong to confront him, and he doesn't want to own up to what he said earlier. There was no place to have class. You were the one who said take them anywhere. Uh, I heard you say that, Mr. Armstrong. So all the students are piled into this office and they are upset because Mr. Knowles is their favorite teacher and the only teacher who seems to care about them and what they're experiencing at this school. Principal Armstrong threatens to suspend them and call their parents, which sends Ziggy spiraling. He was very triggered by Armstrong's threat to call his parents. We'll learn why later. But Lester knows why Ziggy is threatened by this and tries to confront Armstrong about it. Officer Jackson's overly hype ass tries to wrangle Ziggy and it just gets more and more out of hand. Lester even joins in to defend him, but then Ziggy pulls this move. Stay back! I can't go home. Stay back. I gotta go, I can't go home. Listen, Ziggy does not want to go home. At this point, I would think like, what is this kid afraid of? There must be something deeper going on here. But of course, Jackson doesn't have any type of de-escalation skills and while trying to get the gun away from Ziggy, he gets shot in the leg. And this starts a series of events. Stephanie, Rivers, and Lester immediately stand up for Ziggy by saying that it was a mistake and that his back was faced away from Jackson and the gun, but Principal Armstrong is not trying to hear it. As they try to take Ziggy away, Lester grabs the gun and threatens the principal and the other security officer. Now, Rivers doesn't want any of this, but Lester begs him and Stephanie to stay since they are the only ones who saw what happened and can vouch for him. The fire alarm is pulled and the students start running out of the school. Now, Rodney has been creeping in this school the whole time, but after seeing what happened, he decides to leave. But the minute he saw what was waiting for him outside, he immediately changed his mind and goes back in. The block was still a bit too hot for him. And this dude was so clueless. If you see a group of three running, you ask no questions. You run right with them. I thought this was common knowledge. But anyway, <laughs> the school is now surrounded by cops and Lester comes up with a desperate plan to make Officer Jackson their hostage. While Stephanie tries to convince Lester to rethink this whole thing, Rodney takes a good look at Officer Jackson's wound and realizes it might not be as bad as he's making it seem. Bullet went straight through. To hit a vein and nothing. Where'd you get your medical degree, brother? University of Southside Queens, brother. And then this guy seemingly gets a conscience and decides to leave. I'm down with y'all and everything, but my mom's just gonna kick my ass. Hey, be safe, dog. Child, we'll come back to him, but we narrow the final crew down to Ziggy, Lynn, Rivers, Stephanie, and Lester and their hostage, Jackson. So as the officers outside decide to go in and capture the students and rescue Jackson, in comes Detective Audrey McDonald, who's come to try to negotiate with the students. Now, this officer wasn't trying to hear it, so Audrey takes over and saves these kids from getting hurt and intentionally gives Lester reassurance that they can pull this off. They pull Jackson to the window to confirm that he's still alive. Audrey sees this. Meanwhile, the crew tries to convince Lynn that she should get out of there, but knowing that an even stiffer punishment waits for her when she gets home, she opts to stay. Shit, if they don't kill me, my dad will. Stephanie helps Jackson out with his wound. He starts talking to her and learns that she wants to be a doctor. We'll eventually learn if you haven't picked up on this already. All these kids are smart, good kids. Perfect? No. But these are good kids who all have individual issues that they are fighting. But we go to Rodney trying to convince Lester to give him the gun since he feels Lester doesn't have enough heart to handle it. River comes to try and calm both of them down and suggest they worry about more important things, like locking down the building. And since Ziggy knows where everything is, he volunteers to help them get everything they need to lock the building down and block the stairwells. Later on, Jackson tries to talk to Lester and figure out his angle. He assumes that Lester is a troubled kid who has mummy issues, but that's not the case. And this doesn't get to Lester. So he tries another angle. They're gonna come in here. And if they don't get you, Rodney's gonna get you. Then Lester gets a little too close to Jackson and quickly regrets it. <laughs> he barely gets away, but he starts to realize that he needs to toughen up if he plans to see this through. 
Meanwhile, what they have done has now made it to the news and it's no surprise what they are presumed to be. Stephanie Williams along with the reputed gang member Zacharias Malone and then gang members. And then this guy, the same one that was scared of his mama, sold them up a creek. I tried talking to them, but they pointed the gun directly at me. I was jumping over like bodies, but I had to stay calm because I'm the hero of this situation, you know what I mean? And then the principal. There are 2,500 students in my school. Most of them are fine young men and women. The kids in there belong in jail, not in school. That's it. Child, they are calling them gangsters and human predators, basically everything but children of God. It's not going so good for them. But then we learned a little bit about Jackson. Apparently, he was a 16-year veteran who was one of the few officers who saved lives by taking down a bank robber. Now the crew was trying to figure out why he was here at their school and not at a precinct somewhere. Before they could find out, there's a phone call. Audrey has called the main line in an effort to negotiate. She asks to speak with Jackson, but that doesn't go over too well. Maybe we can speak to some of the people on television who've been calling us thugs and criminals first. Is that possible? While they're on the phone, some officers have made it to the stairwell and realize it's blocked. There's also some officers outside ready and aiming at the library where the students currently are. Audrey offers to get a doctor in for Jackson, but Rivers quickly shuts that down, suspecting that they may send another cop instead of a doctor. Audrey asks for their demands, and baby, they could not get on one accord. How about 50 pizzas from Pizza Hut? Left dance from Cameron Diaz. Pop Marley's greatest uh, Oh, I know. How about tickets to Stop home? It. They were not taking this shit seriously, and this flusters Lester, but he eventually answers. You know what I want the cops to get me? My dad. Now deal with that. Turns out, this is something that can't be done. Lester's father was shot three months ago by NYPD. His family filed a wrongful death suit since his father was unarmed. Audrey is starting to understand that this situation is much deeper than she thought. Stephanie comes over to console Lester and to tell him that if he has something to say, the time is now. Everybody's listening. What do you have to say? Then we go to Rodney, who is making a Molotov cocktail for the officers on the stairwell. Y'all hear you motherfuckers? Come on, come halfway up those stairs. Jackson will be toast before you make it to the library. When we go to Audrey, who's questioning the principal, she's pretty much figured out that these are good kids and something must have happened to trigger them. Now, Mr. Principal ain't got shit to say. But child, Lester's mama has made it to the scene, recounting the story of his father's death and here Rodney go. Respect comes at the end of a nine with a fresh clip. Give up Rodney here the phone so you can reinforce those stereotypes before it's too late. <laughs> Rivers was not taking Rodney seriously at all. Jackson decides to meddle, making a comment about how Rodney would never get respect. He's been doing this to everybody, by the way, trying to get in their ears, but this works and Rodney and Rivers get into it. And as Ziggy tries to break it up, his shirt gets torn in the back. We'll come back to that. Lester confronts Rodney and lets him know that either he's down with what they're doing or he's gotta go. And like I said, if the block was hot before, it's officially on fire now, so he's not trying to do that. So he submits and backs down. But Lynn gets a good look at Ziggy's back and his secret is revealed. Holy shit, Ziggy. I'm okay, stop looking at me. Who did that to you? We learned that Ziggy's dad used to abuse him and that's why he was triggered by the principal saying he was going to call his parents. My thing is, why didn't Ziggy stay with Lester? There's no way my friend would be staying at the school by himself. No way. But Jackson shows a little remorse, but Lester wasn't trying to hear it. How could I have known that? When did you ask? First 10 minutes. You made up in your mind who we were. They still haven't figured out a real demand yet. Stephanie urges the crew to get it together and make a list or else what they said on the news about them will be proven to be true. They finally come together to make a tangible list of demands. Heat, updated books, the return of Mr. Knowles, fixed leaks, have a career day. They were on a roll until Lynn gets sarcastic with Stephanie and forced, once again, to acknowledge her reality. I won't even be here in a few months. Oh yeah, where are you gonna be? Fat and sick, okay? As they continue talking about their demands, the phone rings and it's here that Lynn comes up with a bright idea. So the crew reaches out to different news outlets to get their demands out to control the narrative. Now this spreads like wildfire and this works in their favor since this guy wasn't gonna take them seriously anyway. 
They got a little power, now they want to walk. They got a better chance of getting into Yale. McDonald and the captain eventually fold and decide to give them one of their demands, which was Mr. Knowles. Back in the library, Stephanie decides to talk to Lynn. It doesn't go well at first, but eventually they do talk, and Lynn gets vulnerable with her. I just wanted him to kiss me. I never even got the kiss. Damn, that was so messed up. Stephanie asks what she plans to do, and Lynn hasn't figured that out quite yet. Lynn admits that she's scared and also admits this. If I would have known this whole takeover thing was gonna happen, I never would have fucked him. Then we go to Rodney and Rivers. Rivers goes to check on Rodney and Rodney did not want his company. What the fuck you doing here? What, you think you got some kind of monopoly on oppression? Rivers goes on to tell him how his dad used to always tell him his war stories, but now River finally has a war story of his own. This connects with Rodney, who finally feels like he's done something to earn the respect he's been desperately seeking. We go to Ziggy and Jackson in the library. Jackson asks to see what Ziggy's drawing. I thought for sure Jackson was going to try and hem him up when he got close to him, but he doesn't. Ziggy shares his drawings with him and how he dreams of being an artist. Jackson shares with him that his son was an artist as well. My son used to draw. He used to spray paints. And... Oh, what was his tax on? You, you never saw him? You never asked him? I didn't want to know. He was breaking the law. Jackson is slowly starting to see the similarities between Ziggy and his son. So Jackson makes a promise to Ziggy that he will get whoever hurt him and bring him to justice. And this sweet moment ends abruptly when Lester comes to confront Jackson with a picture of his son that he got from his wallet. He's finally found Jackson's trigger. Turns out Jackson has not seen his son in a year. We learn that the reason Jackson is on leave and has been reduced to working at a high school is because his wife and his son left him due to his anger issues and violent tendencies. And homeboy was stressed about it and making bad decisions on the job. Their moment is interrupted when Lynn and the others discover that they have a growing crowd of supporters outside. The narrative has officially changed, but this guy is still on the same shit. Now, you know, I put so girl out the way because I don't want her to get shot. But man, one of the bullets last time hit me in the ankle. You know, I'm just slipping. But Mr. Knowles has finally arrived. While Audrey calls in to negotiate with Mr. Knowles on the line, Jackson tells the crew that he needs to go to the bathroom, so Rodney opts to take him and requests the gun. But Lester wasn't going for it and tells him to take him without it. Now, why would they send Rodney with Jackson by himself? <laughs> Recipe for disaster. Anyway, Lester talks to Mr. Knowles on the phone. Mr. Knowles tries to convince them that they don't need to continue doing this but it's too late to turn back at this point. But while they're talking to him, Jackson escapes from Rodney by knocking his ass out. Captain decides to cut the power and gives word to the officers on the stairwell to go in. When the crew finds Rodney and finds out Jackson has escaped, all hell breaks loose. The officers on the stairwell spot Rodney and take a shot at him, and Rodney swiftly released the Molotovs and sent them running. The library is no longer a safe space, so Ziggy suggests another hiding spot for them to go. They get there without being spotted, and Rivers had just enough minutes left on his phone for Lester to call and cuss out Audrey. You wanna kill us, Audrey? That it? That's your plan? That's the last thing I wanna have happen. Stephanie gets the phone and continues talking to Audrey. Audrey lets her know that if anything happens to Jackson, they will be on the hook for murder. And child, that didn't bother her not one bit. Give us what we asked for. The captain receives word that the commissioner wants this over, so the cops will be moving in and doing what needs to be done, if you catch my drift. And Mr. Knowles was not having it. He demands to be able to speak with them again, but the captain refused. But Mr. Knowles was able to see the cell phone number on the screen, so he gets out of there swiftly so he can inform the crew of what's going to happen. Meanwhile, the crew is able to take a good look at Ziggy's artwork. He's been creating up a storm in his hideout. This kid was crazy talented, but Rodney brings the mood down again by saying that they have to make an example out of them and that they will go down for what they are doing. And Lester swiftly reminds him that if he wants to leave, ain't nobody holding him hostage. Then Rivers and Lynn have a cute little moment. Not that you're having a kid. There's lots of famous people that come from. Dumb sluts who get knocked up. You're not dumb. 
child. <laughs> Rodney confronts Lester yet again, trying to convince him to take Jackson to the roof, and if they don't give them what they want, they should send Jackson to his maker. He even has the nerve to say this. You can't let them get away with that. It's payback time. And if you bitch up after all of this, then you ain't shit. Mind you, this is the same dude who ran back into school not to learn, but to hide from his ops. He couldn't tell me nothing. But anyway, Jackson tries to infiltrate the crew again by telling Stephanie that she's the only reason why things haven't escalated. And this works cause she goes over to Lester to make sure his head is clear. She encourages him to tell the world about his father and this is where we learn the story behind his father's death. So Lester was riding with his dad and he stopped at the store. When he came out of the store after buying ice cream, cops walked up to him and told him he fit the description of a robber and asked him to assume the position. His father refused and of course the situation escalated. As the cops started beating him, his father reaches for his pocket and the cops thought he was reaching for a weapon and they shot him. Lester watched this whole thing happen from the car. He saw his dad being murdered. Now he carries guilt because he felt he should have been able to help his dad, but in reality, there was no saving him. Mr. Knowles calls shortly after to check on them and let them know what the cops are planning. They figured out where you are, or they're coming in. He tells Lester that he has to end this, and Lester seemingly agrees. Meanwhile, the cops are slowly closing in. Lester tells the crew to leave and let him do what needs to be done with Jackson. Of course, the crew wasn't with it and tries to talk some sense to him. You already know Rodney was with it though. So Lester takes Jackson to the roof. Snipers are watching them the whole time and receive the word to take a shot when they can. They even call for a helicopter to assist. Meanwhile, Lester starts to replay a scene from a painful memory. Assume the position. Go on, man. You're gone, and I'm sorry. Jackson is trying his best to talk some sense into Lester. He's looking at you right now. What you think he's thinking? Be a man. All of a sudden, there's a gunshot. The cops finally find the crew in the attic. I guess we can call it that. When we get back to Lester and Jackson, they call a truce, and Jackson is able to talk him down and get the gun away from him. Oh, but Rodney, <laughs> Rodney comes out of nowhere and hems Jackson right back up. Rodney, no. I should've known you was gonna bitch up. Child, shortly after, Ziggy comes running out the building, trying his best to get to Lester. And at the same time, the captain clears the helicopter to take a shot. And unfortunately, Ziggy gets shot and killed. Now, I'm pretty sure this scene was emotional for me when I first saw it years ago but I shed a few tears watching this in my big age. I hated that for Ziggy. He was such a good kid and he had been through so much. But anyway, Jackson ended up defending the crew, which led to them all getting short sentences. Rodney went to the pen and became Muslim. Lynn went to jail and was released after she had her baby. She kept up with Stephanie for a while, but they eventually lost touch. Rivers joined the army and started scamming on a bigger level. He's in great company, trust. <laughs> Stephanie did a year in jail and went to med school after. Lester did two years in jail, came out and was now a pre-law student. Mr. Knowles returned to the high school as well. Every year, Lester and Stephanie came back to celebrate the memory of Ziggy and shared their stories and Ziggy's art with current students. And that's pretty much the end of the movie. And here are my final thoughts. This is one of those movies that everyone can relate to and sadly, this movie is still so relevant. These kids had stories to tell and were collectively going through so much. We had Ziggy who was homeless, living at the school because he didn't want to go home to his abusive father. He had nobody looking out for him other than Lester who was his best friend. Ziggy was talented and dreamed of being an artist and making an impact. I wonder what he would have done once he graduated. Where would he have gone? Was he banking on getting a full scholarship somewhere? I don't know. Then there was Lester who just a few months ago witnessed his father being murdered right in front of him. Then after enduring that loss, having the courts play in him and his family's face with the wrongful death suit. Lester carried guilt about not being able to save his dad, but the truth was if he would have gotten out of that car, him and his father would have been gone. And that's a fact that still remains. I adored Lester and Ziggy's friendship. 
They were truly brothers. If I was Lester's mom, I would have had Ziggy stay with me though. Ain't no way he's staying at this school and ain't no way he's going back home to his dad. <laughs> Stephanie was a high achieving student who wanted more for herself and her classmates. Homegirl was rooting for a career day and new books for everybody. She was selfless, which is a great quality to have if you are trying to enter the medical field. I have no doubt in my mind that she would have made a great doctor. I loved how she was able to anchor Lester and keep the crew aligned and in check, making sure they never lost sight of their goals. As for Rivers and Lynn, I felt bad for Lynn. You could tell she wanted to be seen and heard. And the one time where she felt like that happened, she got more than what she bargained for. It appears as if she didn't receive adequate attention at home. I hope she was able to end that cycle with her child. Rivers is one of those characters who I know will be just fine. Dude is a natural born scammer and he went into the army. That man is gonna be on Capitol Hill in no time. He will be in great company. <laughs> trust. As far as Jackson goes, Jackson was definitely an asshole who let his job and the power he got from that job bring out the worst in him. He came to that school ready and willing to assert power by any means. These were kids and you couldn't even manage to have a convo with them without hemming them up. Had no de-escalation skills, didn't seek to find a peaceful resolution, nothing. Just zero to a hundred. Over time, Jackson was able to see the crew for what they were, lost kids and not suspects of an unknown crime. I loved how he later defended them, which allowed them to get back to their lives sooner rather than never. To be honest, my beef is with Mr. Principal. I sincerely hope dude got fired. It's crazy how we didn't get an update on him because his actions or lack thereof led to all this. This dude told Mr. Knowles to take them anywhere. And when he did, there was a problem. Dude was so concerned about looking good for the superintendent when he should have had a list for their ass and met them at the door. And then he had the nerve to agree with the narrative the media was pushing out about these kids, knowing full and well they were good kids and he knew why and how this all started. His negligence led to all of this really, and it's sad we didn't see what came of that. But anyway, that's it y'all. Thanks for watching this review. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. As for the next review, all I'm going to say is 1999. And when it comes to sequels being better than the original, this is a great example. See you next time, you guys. Bye.